Good day, everyone. My name is Joel Broussard, and this is Brian Schmendinghoff. Today, we will be talking about the PCL grant application process. It is our goal to do the following for this info session. Provide you an overview of the eligibility and application submission process. Talk to you about the community engagement and funding priorities. Do an overview of the web grants process. And then finally, talk about the application due date the review process of grants, and the funding timeline. Okay, so now I will talk to you about the eligibility and application submission process. The PCL was created in 2002 via tax levy to offer grant funds to children programs in the city of Portland. This grant has been renewed four times since then with Portland area voters reauthorizing this grant in May of 2023. The next levy will run July 2024 through June 2029. The goals of the Portland Children's Levy are to 1. Prepare children for school 2. Support children's success inside and outside of school 3. Eliminate racial and ethnic disparities in children's well-being and school success. <laughs> Grants that will be rewarded will be for 36 months from July 1 of 2025 to June 30th of 2028. Applications are due on November 4th of 2024. The goal of the program in the application must offer services in one of the six PCL program areas, which are after school, child abuse prevention and intervention, also known as CAPI, C-A-P-I, early childhood, foster care, hunger relief, and mentoring. The funding application is broken up into two sections. Both of these parts of the application process will guide you. First part is web grants, which we will talk about later in more detail, has four sections. The second part is the application, which has several parts to it, such as program information, finances, etc. If you want to know what the scoring criteria is, please look at the table of contents for the application to find it. There's also a glossary in the application. The PCL website has a resource page regarding the application process. The PCL will also do a weekly question and answer update. In order to apply for a grant through the PCL, at a minimum, you must meet these requirements. Be a not-for-profit corporation 501c3, local education agency, community college, or university. Had at least 750,000 of annual revenues in the last closed fiscal year. We want you to know that groups may apply as a consortium, but there needs to be a lead agency fiscal agent as a part of that group. And finally, you must be applying for a grant to provide services in one of the six PCL program areas. Here are the funding requirements. The maximum three-year grant amount for early childhood is 4.5 million. The maximum three-year grant for all, all other program areas is 2.5 million. The minimum a three-year grant could be is 300,000. An organization's total annual PCL grant request can't exceed 30% of the organization's revenue in their last closed fiscal year. Organizations may submit multiple applications in a single program area and or multiple applications in different program areas. A single application must address only one of the six PCO program areas and at least one funding priority in that program area. The program must directly serve children and or youth and their families. The program also must serve only children and families within the Portland city limits. Okay, now I will talk a little bit about the community engagement process we did and funding priorities. In collaboration with Camille Trummer and PKS International, using surveys, focus groups, and interviews, we heard from 750 community members 
and service providers across Portland. Of the community service respondents, more than 70% were BIPOC, more than 50% lived in households earning less than 50,000 a year, more than 50% had preferred language other than English. This process started towards the end of the last calendar year and wrapped up in the spring of 2024. All funding priorities can be found on the PCO website. Here are some of the funding priority highlights. There was an emphasis on cultural responsive staffing and services. One significant change in the mentoring area is an expansion of the age group to include young adults ages 18 to 24. In early childhood, there is no preschool classroom funding due to the passage of Preschool for All in 2020. There was also a request from respondents for PCO programs to have an increased focus on mental health, social emotional health, system navigation, and reducing parent caregiver isolation. Hi everyone, my name is Brian Schmeninghoff and I'm a new grant manager here at The Levy. Today I'm going to be taking you through the web grants portion of the PCL application as well as discussing the overall PCL grant timeline. Thanks so much for joining us today and learning more about the Children's Levy grant process. First, let's talk about what Web Grants is. Web Grants is the City of Portland's web-based grant management program where community members can apply for funding and manage their grants. For this PCL funding round, we've created several different tools you will need for Web Grants, including screenshot user guides and narrative templates you'll need to fill out and upload into the application. You can find all of that information at the PCL website. Web Grants is a web-based program, so you can access Web Grants in a couple of different ways. You can go to the PCL website and follow the link there. You can go directly to the cityofportlandgrants.net site, or you can even just Google City of Portland Web Grants, and it will likely be the second or third result that you see. For today, we're going to walk carefully through the registration process, which is the first step to accessing Web Grants. After that, I'm going to walk you through just a few of the highlights of how Web Grants is structured and how you submit your PCL grant application. The first step is registration. You'll have to register to use Web Grants. This is how you get your login and your password from the system. We've set a deadline for October 21st to register in Web Grants for this PCL opportunity. It's important to note that PCL staff will have to go into the system and manually approve each registration, and it may take a little time, so we encourage you to register right away. If you already have a login to Web Grants, you won't need to re-register for this application. But anyone who needs to be in the Web Grants system will still need to log in separately. So for example, if you have a program person who's going to answer most of the data questions, and then you have a finance person who's going to enter in all the budget information, both of these individuals will need to be registered separately in Web Grants. Before I walk you through it, I want to point out we have a step-by-step -step screenshot guide on the PCL website with the grant application materials if you're feeling stuck at all. Also, if you need an ADA accommodation or you're having any trouble in web grants, you can feel free to email us at info at portlandchildrenslevy.org and put web grants in the subject line. We'll do our best to help you as soon as we can. So let's take a look at what you see when you open web grants. So here is the login portion of the web grants landing page. If you're registering for the first time, you'll need to click on the yellow Click Here to Register button. That will take you to a screen that looks like this, where you enter your name and your contact info. A few things to note. Any fields with a red label are required, so you will have to fill them out before you can submit your registration. In the email field, please enter your address carefully. When your registration is approved, your login and password will be sent to the email address you enter here, so you do want to make sure there are no errors. If you do make an error here, you will have to contact the PCL staff so we can fix it on the back end. Then please enter your work-related contact information. After you enter the contact info, you'll see three additional questions. In the Program Area of Interest question, please select PCL for Portland Children's Levy. This won't restrict you from seeing other city-related grants once you log in. It's not restrictive in any way. All this does is ping us to let us know that you registered so we can then go into the system and approve it. 
for copy personal information into organization, click yes. And then for are you affiliated with an organization, you must click yes. If you click no, you won't be able to access any of the grant application materials and you won't be able to submit anything. So once you click yes, some more questions will pop up below these. And this will be the organization name, type, and contact info. Notice it just says name in the field, but it's actually the name for the organization, not your name a second time. Under organization type, some choices in this list might feel confusing. If you're not sure where you fall, choose nonprofit organization. Most of our community members applying to the levy will fall in this category. Under tax ID, if you don't have that information handy, that's okay. Just enter NA or I don't know, and PCL staff, we can fix that later. The optional website field here can be a little tricky. It only recognizes answers that have HTTPS colon slash slash in front of it. In this example, I tried entering our PCL website without the HTTP and it wouldn't accept it in that format. So I would recommend either directly copying your web address from a browser window or leaving it blank. We can always add that information in later. Once all the information is submitted, you click on Save Registration Information, and you should be taken to this confirmation screen. The confirmation screen says an email has been sent to your address. If you don't get this email within 30 minutes or so, check your spam folder. If you still don't see it, reach out to PCL staff and we can troubleshoot with you. Once we approve your registration, you should receive an email from the web grant system with your login and your password. This email can look kind of junky, so make sure you keep an eye out for it. So here are some puppies while we take a break from all the screenshots. What questions do you have about the registration process in web grants? Let's talk about it. So let's take a look at how the application is structured in the system. We've done our best to make web grants forms as straightforward as we can. And again, I'll mention that we have step-by-step -step screenshot guides on the PCL website. It's on the same page as all the application materials. If you work in web portals a lot, it's probably worth skimming the application guide because Web Grants does have some idiosyncrasies to it. If you're not a regular user of grant portals, it might be more helpful to review the application guide more closely. In Web Grants, the PCL applications are categorized by funding opportunities. Those six funding opportunities mirror our six different program areas, after school, early childhood, etc. When you log into Web Grants, it may not be clear where to go. On the left-hand side of the screen, in the navigation bar, you'll see a button that says Funding Opportunities. If you click on that, it will take you to a screen that shows all of the available funding opportunities for the City of Portland, which will show all six of the PCL categories. There may be more, too, listed from other bureaus, depending on what's posted in the system when you're logged on. To select one of these funding opportunities, you simply click on the row that you want. In this example, I'd be clicking on After School. And that takes you to the Funding Opportunities screen. Here, you can look at the Funding Opportunity title on the left-hand side to make sure you're in the right funding opportunity, and you would click on the green button on the right to start your application. That application will essentially live in this Funding Opportunity category. Joel mentioned this already, but it's worth noting in Web Grants too. You can create multiple applications in each funding opportunity. For example, if you're applying for two different hunger relief programs, you can have multiple applications in different funding opportunities. In that example, you might be applying for both early childhood program and a foster care program, but you cannot have one program be in multiple funding opportunities. So for example, you can't apply for one program under both after school and mentoring. You would have to pick the one that feels most relevant to your program. For those of you from larger agencies who submit multiple applications, this is one of the trickiest things about web grants. When we were designing and testing the application forms of web grants, we realized it can be confusing to know which application you're working in, especially if you have to switch back and forth between them. So my two tips to combat this issue are, one, name your grant application with a very clear, very distinct program name. Don't just call it after school number one and after school number two because that'll make it much trickier to navigate. Number two, anytime you aren't 100% sure which application you're in, I recommend you go click that funding opportunity button on the left-hand navigation bar and choose the funding opportunity and grant application you wanna be working in. 
this might sound confusing, but as you work in the system, you should get the hang of it pretty quick. So let's review the structure of the application in Web Grants. I like to think of it as two big chunks of information, the hard data, things like number of children served, the languages they speak, things like that, and then the narrative. The narrative is much more the why of your program, like your program's history with DEI efforts, the types of needs you're trying to meet in the community, that kind of stuff. To break that up in the application online, we have five steps that you have to fill out, with the fifth step being the narrative and attachment upload. I want to especially point out the narrative template on the PCL website. This template is required because it will meet the formatting requirements like font size. Please pay special attention to those formatting requirements to make sure the narrative you upload complies with the requirements. When you're in your Web Grants application view, this is what the five steps will look like. All you have to do is click on the row of the step that you want to edit, and it will take you to that form where then you enter the information. So there's a unique function of the application forms where you have to mark every step as complete once you've filled out all the information or uploaded the narrative and the attachments. Once you mark all the forms as complete, then the Submit Application button shows up. So then you can submit your final application. Let me show you what that looks like. In this example, I'm in the step one form and I filled everything out and I've saved my work. Then up at the top, I can click on the orange mark as complete button, which will mark this form as complete in the system. I should mention, if I need to change one of my answers, I can still do that, even if I mark the form as complete. That doesn't stop me from making changes. I could still click on the green edit form button and get those changes made. In this example, when I go back to the application overview screen, you can see from all the green check marks that I've marked all of my step forms as complete. Once that's done, then the orange submit application button shows up at the top and then I can submit my final application. Once I click submit application, the application is final and I cannot edit my application anymore. That's a very basic high level overview of the web grant system. And there's a lot more detail available on our website in the screenshot user guides. If you still end up with issues, I recommend you scan the weekly Q&A that we'll post on the website each week and if you still feel stuck, you can always reach out to us at info at portlandchildrenslevy.org and put web grants in the subject line. I'll be watching that inbox really closely every day and do my best to help you right away. The most important advice I can give you is please do not wait until the last minute to register or to submit your application. If you have a web grants issue on the day it's due, we may not be able to help you in time depending on how many people are having issues. I was a grant writer for over 20 years, so I know how tough it can be when you're juggling lots of deadlines. But my advice, tell a little white lie to anyone you need info from and bump the deadline up a few days. This way, you have a little bit more wiggle room to get things done. So your reward for getting through all the web grants material is this cute little squirrel. What questions do you have about web grants? Let's talk about it. So the final section of our conversation today is about the funding timeline. The Web Grants registration deadline is October 21st, and the grant applications are due November 4th at 11.59 p.m. in Web Grants. The levy will not consider applications that are not submitted by the deadline. After applications are submitted, the volunteer review process will begin on November 18th. In January of 2025, staff will create the funding recommendations that we will then share with the Community Council and Allocations Committee for feedback, consideration, and recommendations to staff. PCL staff will facilitate Allocation Committee meetings where they will make their final funding decisions no later than May of 2025. After these decisions are made, City Council will review the Allocation Committee's funding recommendations for formal approval. After formal approval is given, PCL staff will notify grantees of awards as soon as possible. Contracts for services will begin on July 1st, 2025. And this is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for sitting with us today and learning about our grant process. What questions do you have about the grant timeline? And what other questions do you have regarding the rest of the PCL grant process?